Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this weekly podcast focuses on discussing the practical tips and techniques that all of us can use in life to aid us in finding our inner peace and happiness. If you have suggestions for topics, please let me know through social media, this site, or email. My contact information can be found at my website, lifesjourneyblog.com. This episode is titled, The Zen Pig, as I'm joined by Mark Brown, the founder of the Zen Pig book series. In this episode, we discuss the book series, its creation, and the goal of spreading mindfulness to children. Uh, here today with a special guest who is uh, the founder of the Zen Pig, and uh, looking forward to learning more about what the Zen Pig is all about, and um, you know what uh, uh, makes the the Zen Pig important for not only our lives but for uh, the rest of the world. Um, so I'm here with uh, Mark Brown, and uh, Mark, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, Chris. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be with me today. And and same with you. This this is very exciting. Um, I think I uh, first found you through Instagram and uh, started following uh, the post and was Thank very you. intrigued. Um, intrigued for a lot of reasons. I mean, my first intrigue, to be honest, was just the fact that one of my favorite animals is a pig. So it's like <laughs> anything that's dealing with a pig, I got to go check this out. I hear you. Um, but, you know, when we're talking about, you know, mindfulness and Zen and meditations and focus on the present, it was like, huh, here's somebody combining all of that with my favorite animal. Thank so... You you know, definitely check you out. And and it seems to be a lot more than uh, just what I first thought as, as I learned more about, uh, you know, what you're doing. So um, can you That's... let us know kind of what is uh, the whole Zen Pig effort and, and what are you all about? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. First, thanks for the Instagram follow and, and all the likes and things. That, that's, that always means the world to us. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Zen Pig, it's a, it's a children's book series. Uh, currently there's four titles out in circulation. Um, Zen Pig really is all about teaching children mindfulness, gratitude, compassion, presence, all of the other evergreen values as well. Um, and easy to understand language and, and kind of bring that to the forefront of their consciousness well before it hit mine. You know, I was in my mid to late twenties before that was even on my radar, and, um, you know, with the birth of my son, I kind of wanted to, not kind of, I definitely wanted him to avoid all the mistakes that I had made. Uh, and so mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness and presence and, and that whole journey has really allowed my life to blossom and allowed um, many things to, to come about that, that never would have in, in the old mindset. And so I really just wanted to bring Zen Pig in the world for him. Um, but of course, that uh, that grew. I, I didn't expect it to, to be completely honest, but uh, I'm very, very grateful that it has, for sure. So just out of my curiosity, and maybe others, why the pig? So here's, here's a really big, nasty secret that your listeners may want to close their ears for. It uh -oh. is a pig. Yeah, it, it's, it's really, yeah. It's a pig because that is the only animal that I could draw. Nice. Yes, yes. And it just so happened like that, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't illustrate these books. Um, nobody wants me to draw a thing, I promise. Um, but the character Zen Pig came about well before the, the books came about because I would just draw Zen Pig with my son. And um, one of the Easter eggs of the whole Zen Pig universe is that Zen Pig is actually just two zen symbols uh he's just two circles um and the international symbol for zen is just one continuous circle um mm -hmm. 
So uh, that's how he, how he became a pig. But all the other characters are uh, fruits of my wife's imagination and um, talent. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's that, that's really exciting. You know that it, it can come out from such humble origins, and and as you're trying to give this message you know, across to you know your son as well as you know uh, other children that. Uh, you know, the the origin is, is as humble as the message. Absolutely. Oh, it, it definitely is. It certainly is. And um, I'm very grateful for what it's it's come to be. And, and I'm very excited for where it's going to. Zinpig is, right now it stands as a, a children's book series, but it's really a children's emotional wellness brand. And we have many sister products that are coming down the pipeline. And, and, and it's all about just helping children and the parents develop mindful habits and techniques um, so that they become second nature just as, you know, um, wanting more is just a habit. Um, but, but we can integrate mindfulness and, and contentment just as easily, you know? So, um, so all of these things are going to come about and, and bring about more of a, um, peaceful and, and content, uh, child, hopefully. Right. Well, you know, definitely if, if this is the focus and, you know, what I really like what the focus is, you know, children's books tend to have meaning and teach something and, and all of that is important. But I think it's quite rare to have a book that is going to help, you know, children to understand what it's like to, uh, you know, be mindful to be in that moment. And, and sure, I, I, mean, I haven't really researched all children's books, but well, no, I, I haven't come across that with my own kids. No, no, you're absolutely right. And um, when I was, you know, all parents, when we have a kid, we become saturated in children's media. It just kind of happens. Um, and, you know, there's really two types of children's books. There's like the ABCs, one, two, threes, and the academic. And then there's more of the, um, you know, there's a lot of superhero stuff, a lot of, uh, you know, teaching lessons through, you um, very action oriented or, um, you know, that whole scene. Um, and I felt like there was a real deficit for just, uh, evergreen values, you know, Mm -hmm. beyond sharing, um, these, these values that are, are baked into each of us, but they need to be nurtured. They need to be watered. Um, and, and I really feel like there's a deficit and I, and I'm really excited because I'm seeing a lot more, um, brands come about, uh, children's book brands and, and children's books, uh, I mean, children's toys and, um, accessories that are, that are really promoting this type of mindset. And that's really exciting. Um, if we get this next generation, uh, set up way before we did, we're going to be in a really good place. Oh, I, I totally agree. You know, it's a lot of my focus has been with, uh, young adults into, uh, you know, adults and, and all that. And, and it's great to see people coming around and saying, hey, you know, we need some of this stuff. But, it, you know, we do need to start this with the younger generations. And, yes. uh, you know, when you look at what's going on around the world, you know, I mean, kids naturally, you know, can find, you know, good in, in practically anything that's going on if you give them a chance. Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. and it, it'd be amazing to see them, you know, not only find the good in life, but to understand, you know, the whole then peace to life, which is even deeper than just finding the good, at least I think. Absolutely. Oh, it totally is. It totally is. And, and children are, when I go to readings and signings, they, I've said this before and I'll say it again, they are my, my teachers because children have this incredible capacity to be present. They're in the moment. Mm-hmm. They're not thinking about what's happening in an hour or whatever. And, and I, that's something that I, to this day, struggle with. It's something that I'm, I'm working on, but you know, when, when my son and I are getting ready to go, we've got a birthday party to go to or whatever. And he's, he's not worried about putting his shoes on or like getting there exactly on time. He's just engrossed in what he's doing at the moment. And there has to be constraints put around that obviously, but we tend to lose that as adults. We we're always yeah. on the, the clock. We're always on the timeline. And we, we find it really hard to lose ourselves in the moment like children do. Um, and, and they just have that incredible, beautiful, precious capacity to be in the moment. And it's, it's just really an incredible thing. And, and I never want to um, 
beat that out of them in terms of uh, verbally um, saying that's wrong. Yeah. Timeline, timeline, timeline. Um, efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Um, I want I want them to have uh, a character like Zenpig that says that's that's okay and that's actually a, a really great thing. Keep doing that. <laughs> Oh, exactly. You know, because like I say, we lose that as adults. And, and I, I think, you know, if we could keep that, because oh, yes. in, in my mind, it's the, the fact of being Zen and, and mindful of, of the moment to me doesn't take away from our ability to be productive and, and to right. accomplish what we need to accomplish. It's, right. it's you know, where, where are we finding that source uh, of our energy and our giftedness? And mm-hmm. I love you that. Know, they have it. We lose it. And uh, they can teach us so much. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm with you on that one. What, um, you know, when, when you come up with this, you know, Zen concept and, and you're know, trying to help out your son, is, is this something that fits within what your background is and, and your trainings and all? Or did this really take you out of your, uh, you know, kind of comfort area and into something totally different? Well, before Zenpig, uh, I would probably say four years before Zenpig is when I really began my spiritual journey, my um, my personal development journey. Um, and so, when I wrote Zenpig, it was not uncomfortable. It is you know that's just the fruits of of the the work and effort and trainings and practice that I, I do. Um, but it is in stark contrast to. Um, you know, my past, what I consider like my past life, you know, mm-hmm. 24 and below, <laughs> you know, there's a stark contrast of that. Let me be clear. Um, and, 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 and I do want to be uh, clear about this too, because I said my spiritual journey, um, I don't consider uh, Zen Pig a, a spiritual book at all. It's not a religious okay. text or anything like that. I, I firmly believe that it's just about evergreen values that any parent, no matter the religion, can plug into whatever the household believes uh, and, and, and have those values flourish. Right, right. So it's more just that, that spirituality of otherness and connectedness, I, I, I would assume, right. versus a religious spirituality. Yeah, I, 100%, absolutely, that we're all in this together, um, love each other, all the good stuff, all that really juicy stuff, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, everything that kids already inherently know right. and we mess them up yeah. with. Exactly. Exactly. You <laughs> nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah. Um, how, how has this uh, influenced your journey through, you know, the mindfulness and spirituality? Well, to be honest with you, um, it has – it adds some conviction to my practice in terms of, um, you know, there, I want to be, uh, I want to live up to what I am attempting to instill basically. So that, that adds a layer of accountability for me personally. I feel like I'm, I am absolutely, I say this often, you know, I think sometimes people think that uh, our household probably looks really, you know, a Zen pig all the time, you know, everything like that. No, no, you know, angers still come up. We, we, we acknowledge our anger, you know, everything is just like everyone else. It's just, I really do try to, um, to manifest exactly what I'm, I'm putting out there, you know? Right. Well, and, and I, I really appreciate you saying that because, you know, part of what I try to talk about here on the podcast, as well as my website and uh, writings and all, you know, is the practical approach to yeah. mindfulness and how we can live that. And mm-hmm. and I, I think it is important that, you know, we all remind ourselves that none of us are perfect. And, you know, Absolutely. just because we can practice this doesn't mean it, it's going to be practiced 100 percent. Absolutely. Perfect Absolutely. all the time. That's exactly right. And I think that's one of the largest lessons that I have um, learned from my spiritual journey is managing expectations. I think mm. that when a lot of us who grew up in the, uh, what I would call like Puritan beliefs, you know, they, mm. that if we're not suited up. And if we, if we, if we drop the F bomb, if we, 
you know, any, any slight um, skewing of this perfect path, you know, quote unquote, uh, we feel guilty. We feel shameful. We feel like we don't belong in, in that sect of belief or whatever. Uh, I think managing expectations and just, Hey, I practice today. I'm getting better. It's all about progress, not perfection. That's mm-hmm. success. That's all it's about. Yeah, and and uh, I'm I'm so glad that you're emphasizing that because it really is about the progress, not the perfection. It, it, it's about, in in my mind, the learning from those times that we may mm-hmm. fall short of those, yeah. uh, you know, expectations and. Right. You know, what do we learn from that so we can move forward? And, and I think that's probably one of the great lessons for children, you know, is that oh, yeah. in, instead of shaming them for being wrong, it, it's, yes. you know, helping them to understand, well, you know, why might this have been wrong and, and what could we do different? You know, what do we learn from this? Uh, how do we expand from this? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we're not going to grow if we keep beating ourselves up, living in shame, living in guilt you know, there's, there's, we have to stop beating ourselves up over, I made this terrible decision, this this huge pivot point in my life, and now I can't go back and blah, blah, blah. It's really on a spectrum, you know, this, this was not a great decision, there's always better decisions, and there's always worse decisions, you know, so I think we operate a lot of times on an offer on, this is right or wrong. Uh, And it's more, hey, I could have done better if I had chosen this. Or, you know, but it's not a, it's not a light switch. It's more like a dimmer switch, you know, <laughs> you, mm-hmm. it, you're going to turn yeah. it, you're going to crank it up. Sometimes you're going to vibrate and shine and, and you're going to be on the highest frequency. And then other times, you know, it's going to be a little bit dim, but we just have to take steps and measures to, to, to turn it the other way. Oh, uh, most definitely. And it, it, it isn't that black and white thinking and, you know, from my experience with children and my own, uh, you know, the, that's not how they operate. You know, they're, right, they're exactly. in a, a very gray area. They're, they're not yeah. black and white. <laughs> that's right. You're so right. You're so right. Um, so I, I also, you know, what was very pleased to see, you know, when I did my little investigating on my favorite animal mixed in with mindfulness and Zen, sure. the, it seems that Zen pig is also affecting the rest of the world. Yes. Yes. Baked into uh, the Zen pig brand is a, a philanthropic cause. I always wanted it to, to, because one of the biggest lessons that I feel children can learn is that joy and pleasure. And there's just something very natural about giving. It, it feels mm-hmm. quote unquote, right. Uh, if, so every copy sold provides 10 people clean water for one year. And I wanted it to be, I shopped nonprofits nationwide. So many of them could not give me numbers like that. Um, and, and I found the perfect one. They've embraced this project with open arms, w- allowed me to be as hands-on or hands-off as I want to be. And they are able to provide that, that level of, of, of giving and it's just incredible. And the children, they, they receive that, uh, that feeling of, Hey, by doing this, this many people got clean water for one year. It's very specific. I wanted it to be not vague. Uh, that's, that's hard right. for children to understand. Uh, a, a portion of the proceeds went to whatever. Um, but you know, I think it's much easier for a child to say, Hey, 10 kids or adults, um, are going to get some clean water out of this. That's a, that's a big, big, big deal. You know, I'm over here worried if, if my kid eats an organic cucumber and there are some fathers that, that can't even provide clean water and that's right. mind blowing. Um, so it was, it was something that it was non-negotiable to me. Uh, it had to be in there and it, and it had to be a part of the brand. Yeah, no. And, and to me that I, I was very surprised because I would never have thought that, you know, a book would also try to do a larger impact, uh, you know, than, than simply be the book, you know, right. with, with the great message, sure. you know, that's there. And, and, you know, the book alone has that wonderful message, but thank then to expand that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm blown away. You know, I, 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 as I say, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the readers. Um, 
they have really just embraced and given so much. I, I'm, I'm so proud of them and honored to serve the readers. And, and it's just incredible. I, I love going in every month. I deliver a check to Mocha Club, who is the nonprofit that provides this. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm overjoyed every month, just knowing that all these people have elected to, um, to give in this way. And it's just, it's incredible. I love that. Right. No, and, and because, the, like you say, you know, the lessons that we can help children, you know, to understand. And, right. and, and you know, again, I keep going back to just my, my basic knowledge of, of children. That, that's never really been my focus, but sure. they are willing to give. You know, I mean, yeah. I, you, know, you, you see kids with like, you know, their last piece of candy, we'll give it to another kid who's crying for a piece. Right. You know, and, and almost without thinking, it, it's like, well, that's just what you do. You know, it, right. it's right. a natural thing. Right. Uh, so to be teaching the, these wonderful evergreen values and to take that on top of that and say, by the way, here's what we're also doing. And, and you know, as children, you know, here's what you're helping. Right. Um, right. Because, yeah, I mean, how many kids really have that idea that others don't even have water? Right, exactly. And, and we have because we're so insulated from true need. And, and I say that not in a condescending or a criticizing way, like I am blessed and grateful every single day that that I can just walk downstairs and get water like that's incredible. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm not criticizing that, but we're so insulated from true need. And I think if we can, we don't have to shove it in the child's face or like show them graphic images or anything like that. They're not prepared for that. But if we could just bring that into their awareness that, hey, you know, this is something that not everybody has, but you are giving to them. That's a big deal. And also, while it teaches them that joy of giving, it also teaches them that incredible incredibly empowering feeling of gratitude. They, they understand that, Hey, some kids don't even have water. Um, I can just go get, I can go get a box of apple juice right now or whatever I want. Like that's a big deal. And so if, right. if we, if we become aware of these things, we become grateful uh, for, for what is already in existence. You know, we've already made it. We're, we are living cush. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, what I'm hearing from you is, is, you know, this great attitude and this part of, you know, what I would assume is your, you know, journey through the mindfulness and, and Zen and, and that we don't need to necessarily feel bad or shame the kids into, hey, you right. can get orange juice and a kid doesn't have water. Right, right. But it, it's dealing with that present moment and just the reality of, you know, yeah, here is what we have. That's reality. Right. Right, and there's a reality that some kids don't have this, Absolutely. and we're going yeah. to help them who don't have it. But we don't need to shame you exactly. because you got it and make you feel bad for your box of orange juice. Exactly, there you're not helping anybody by feeling shame for your box of orange juice. That's not helping anybody. You know what I mean? So, so be mm-hmm. grateful that you, be grateful that you have that orange juice, and be be glad that there's opportunities to give. So. You know, there's no there there doesn't need to be any negative emotion to that. It's it's all it's all great. It's all great things. Yeah, yeah. No, and 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 that's you know I I'm really love to hear you know what what you're saying in that way because it, it really seems that through this effort we're we're able to to teach children those, those you know wonderful lessons in life and to do it in in a joy filled way. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, more of that. Yeah, <laughs> we need more of that in the world, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so how are the, uh, you know, when we look at, you know, like you're saying, you know, for the water and, and things like that in, in rough numbers, uh, how well has uh, the effort been supported? Oh, it's been incredible. It's been incredible. I, you know, I haven't calculated the numbers for this year, 2016, uh, but, uh, in the first six months of Zen pigs, uh, release from nothing, you know, no, right. no big launch parties or anything. The first six months, I, I believe the number was somewhere on the order of 11,000, something like that, uh, wow. provided with clean water. Um, so that was like, you know, try start, you know, wow. nothing. And then boom, that happened. Yeah. So 
uh, I'm very excited for what the end of this year, after I do the numbers for this year, I'm very, very excited to see what that yields because it's um, exponentially more. Um, oh, and definitely. The, and, and so it's just, it's a, it's a big deal. And, you know, even then, I I couldn't, it's hard to fathom 11,000 people. Like that's a, that's a huge number. And I, I just really had um, an issue or, or trouble trying to communicate how grateful I was for everyone um, doing that. I mean, that's, that's, that's so huge taking a chance. I mean, you know, it's, this is a title and a series that nobody had heard of and uh, they, they, they voted for it, you know, in a way. And that was mm-hmm. a big deal for me. Yeah. almost oh, definitely. I mean, you know, to have that great outpouring, you know, for something brand new right out the gate, mm-hmm. uh, you know, really solidifies the that what is going on is really meant to be, you know, and and that that's just great because what what really enlightens me on this is, you know, the kids are going to learn these great lessons, mm-hmm. but they're not the ones buying the books. That's right. That's right. That's so right. you know, the, the, there's this whole bunch of adults who are buying into this and saying, yeah, we we, we see the need that our children. Right. You know, I have to kind of learn how to do this. Yes. And uh, so that's really speaking to me in, the, in that sense that, you know, we're, we're definitely reaching the larger, uh, you know, audience and, and bringing in those adults, uh, you know, on top of this. We have to read the books to the kids. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm and I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, Zenpig operates as a nice reminder for myself to be sure, you know, um, because I read it to my son, of course, and he actually has caught me several times kind of skewing and, and skating away from the philosophy there for a second. I can remember uh, one instance right off the top of my head, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had knocked over a glass of water. <laughs> you could tell that I was clearly not pleased. And in uh, one of the Zimpig titles, it says, um, you know, we all make mistakes, so forgive yourself fast. And so he quoted Zinpig to me immediately. And I was just slapped in the face with my own uh, philosophy. And it was, it was this wonderfully bittersweet moment where I was like, oh, it's working. Oh, I'm not living it, though. <laughs> and, and, and I have no doubt that's in that experience that is being played out in many a household with the Zenpig series. <laughs> because I'm kids positive. do memorize I'm these positive. things and they will call an adult out. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, yes. You know, and, and think though of that bonding moment, you know, and, and that's what I was hearing from you, you know, that there's this nice bonding moment, uh, you know, with your son that sure, you know, it kind of stings like, oh, yeah, you know, you got me and whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, you bonded right. on that certain level. Absolutely, it's it's an incredible blessing and honor, and 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 I'm just blown away and incredibly grateful for him and, and our relationship. Yeah, no, that's uh, all of this is just really awesome for me, and uh, thank you. you. Know, that, that's why I'm so glad to be hearing more of this, and you know, and in any way you know that that we can help promote, you know, definitely. Wow, uh, you want to get that word out there. That means the world. Um, Thank you. Is there anything else that you would like to convey about uh, Zempig and, and you know what you're doing and all uh, that we haven't covered? No, no. Uh, you know that's that's the whole shebang right there. I would be honored and and infinitely grateful for any of your listeners if they just find Zempig on Instagram, give them a follow. Um, you know, we we follow back and and show the love. We we love to see our readers and fans and, and and we want to help them share their own light. You know what I mean? Zenpig tries to share light every single day and um, we'd like to help others do the same. So if, if you have something that uh, that you're doing that, that promotes well-being, kindness and, and, and all the other good stuff, just, just send Zenpig a holler because we're, we're all about backing that stuff and, and uh, lifting each other up basically. That That's, yeah, and, and that's really what it's all about. Yeah, you know, how can we all link together to right. help each other in this common cause? Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, how uh, how is the best way for people to reach you who do want to hook up right. or you know right. purchase the books and? 
Yeah. So zenpigbook.com is a great way to get the title. And there's a lot of, there's a, a blog attached to it. And um, there's, you know, that's the quickest way I would imagine to get the books. It is on Amazon, of course. Um, it's in 17 local retailers here in the Nashville area. Um, we're in a handful across the country. Um, but yeah, zenpigbook.com, amazon.com is a great way to do it. I would love and, and be honored for Instagram follows. Uh, like I said, we post original content there, things that aren't in the titles, but we also mm -hmm. um, post things that are and, and, and other updates, you know, and, and tips and tricks and, and mindful parenting uh, techniques. So find Zenpig and, and show us some love, please. Yeah, and, and I would definitely encourage people to do that. We're, uh, you know, following you on, on Instagram, and, and it, it's great to see what's out there. Um, and, and you are putting some really good stuff, and, you know, so people can hook up with you over there and, and even, um, you know, find the apps needed to, uh, you know, kind of, I don't know what it's called. It's not a retweet. It's a reshare of Instagram. I don't oh, know. Oh, oh, repost, repost. Repost, Okay. Yes. Um, you know, and, and really, you know, get that out on, on some of their feeds as well. And, and I, I would echo that and encourage people to, you know, to do that. Oh, absolutely. So. And if any of your listeners already own Zenpig, I, we love to see children being read to or reading Zenpig themselves. And that really brightens our Perfect. day. So uh, send those our way too, please. Perfect. Yep. That, that would be awesome to see. So, um, well, again, I, I, you know, I'm very grateful for what you're doing and uh, for your time. And uh, I you know, so want to thank you, Mark, for, you know, being uh, with all of us and hope for the continued success of, of all that you're doing. And, and I'm sure it's going to branch into even more things down the road. Thank you, Chris. I hope you keep thriving yourself. I, I definitely appreciate it. I would like to hear from all of you about your thoughts on this topic. Please leave a comment on this site, or go to my website for access to all of my social media links. I hope you found this episode helpful, and if so, please spread the word by sharing with and telling your friends about this podcast. I encourage you to rate this podcast on iTunes or whichever service you use, as your ratings help to make this podcast more visible to others. Thank you. And have a mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.